top five benefits. Um, the top five benefits are um, in order of how you're probably going to perceive them unless you're a trainer or a behaviorist is uh, better coat condition, better teeth, better muscle tone or fat loss, uh, better behavior for, and the fifth one would be less waste. Um, so lower in salt, so less wee, better for kidneys, that kind of thing. That's all around the fifth point. Just to develop those points a little bit, better coat condition. The coat, um, I've got maybe three or four studies there. By the way, anytime I say I'm talking about a study, if anybody wants that study, the references are available uh, at the end of the show. So just let Kieran know and I'll blast them to Kieran and then you can have them, okay? I am just a little bit precious about them because I have a book coming out called Raw Signs. It's an absolute monster. I've been working on it for 10 years. Uh, and so the references that I'm finding, nobody's really talking about them, but they're just gems. And it's just so exciting to find one of these studies. It's like you're unearthing a bit of gold. You've been digging around, reading through all this, you know, crap. And eventually you get to this study that just makes perfect sense. You go, oh, this is so interesting. So um, better co condition. There's about three studies out there that shows 30% of the protein that your dog eats goes into maintaining his skin and coat. And if you talk about a very... Um, hairy dog like a, like a new found one or something think of the energy and and protein that coat costs to, to recycle that every three or four weeks so dry pet food with 18 20 percent protein in it for an adult dog that is the minimum permitted for an adult dog for normal function over six months in a cage in a pet food factory okay so 18 to 20 percent protein is the minimum amount of protein it's not the optimum there's never been a discussion of optimum ingredients in pet food until the last few years but in dry pet food world, you are feeding the minimum amount of protein. I have to reiterate that. Every vet that stands over that food is recommending that your dog is better off fed the minimum amount of protein than an optimum amount of protein, which is insane considering that compared to carbohydrates. Uh, if you wanted to eat more of one than the other, we already know what the answer is. So uh, when you give a dog lots of protein, he's, uh, he's going to have more resources to do everything. Protein is everything. It's your skin, hair, nails. Uh, it's your body functions, organs, muscle, bones. It's everything. It's your hormones. It's your cellular reproduction. Protein is everything. So when your dog's got lots of free spare protein, the coat, which is probably last in line because I want to keep my head happy, my heart happy, and keep my hormones running, you know, and a, a fancy hairdo is last in the line for the old protein. So when you start giving a dog lots of protein, it just immediately it comes out in the coat. Even the oil in your coat is protein based. So within about two or three weeks, when you shed the old coat, you should keep some of that hair and compare it to the coat three weeks later. It's, it's, it's unbelievable, the difference. So that's always the first thing. And studies show in cats, particularly, um, that feeding raw meat to, to cats is just an instant coat coat growing thing if you're showing dogs and you're feeding dry food you're doing it wrong and better teeth there is just as many studies as you need to see that raw meaty bones is not only safe so i'm talking very quickly guys if, if for some of you aren't used to uh, irish people talking um buckle up so um better teeth so the reason dry food doesn't clean your teeth is because it's little pebbles just skipping off their teeth the dogs don't brush their teeth uh, and also carb, the dry food is full of carbs and sugar. And dogs have no amylase in their saliva, as we mentioned before, so they can't clear the sugar from the mouth. Bacteria love that. And for all those reasons, eight out of 10 dogs are dry fed. Eight out of 10 dogs have gum disease by the time they're three years of age. You know, that's not a coincidence, guys. Um, eight out of 10 don't get meaty bones. There's a reason for that. And we, I've got countless studies showing that chewing raw meaty bone cleans dog's teeth. One raw meaty bone will clean your dog's teeth if his teeth are bad enough. But feeding raw meaty bones twice a week, very, very good idea um, for any dog. If you're a dry feeder, I'd recommend feeding raw meaty bones separate to your dry food by an hour or two because uh, dry food can change things in the digestive uh, end of things. And you want your, 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 your stomach to itself when you're eating a raw meaty bone if you're dry fed. Uh, so I recommend that. Um, you can see any supportive studies for that on my website. If you want any help feeding bones, there's a great art, long article on bones I'd recommend for different sizes and stuff. We can talk about bones later. Muscle tone, number three. Look, if you're going to the gym, and we're omnivores, bearing in mind, we're going to the gym and we're trying to bulk up. We're trying to put on a nice body. We're trying to shed the fat and look as good as we can for the summer. You're not going to do that eating 50% bread rolls. You know, we don't bulk up on carbs. We cut the carbs down because we don't want the carb budge and we want to look, you know, as handsome as we can when whatever. So muscle tone, it's kind of protein. You hear everyone talking about protein and these are omnivores. All dogs eat is protein and fat. If you think about what dogs eat in the wild, they eat lean animals. You know, uh, fat animals get eaten quite quickly. So most animals that dogs eat are lean. The, the deer and field 2002 study was, was gold, gold. They just looked at all the prey animals and just put them in the magic mix or food blender and analyzed exactly what was in that animal. And they found that 
at their leanest, they're five parts protein to one part fat. And then it gets ridiculously lean after that for some animals and reptiles and birds and sort of stuff. So dogs are used to living on a very lean diet. But the point is that is a diet of a lot of protein, a little bit of fat and zero carbs. That's the dog's kind of life in a nutshell. Now that will change and dogs are excellent at processing fat, far better than we are. And these days they are fed very fatty diets because we feed them farm animals, which are fatty animals compared to wild prey. So they do get fattier, fattier diets now. And, they're, and that's probably okay, to be honest, because they're excellent with fat. But the point is, you, we are, a lot of people are out there feeding 50, 60% carbohydrates. You're giving this Labrador, this dog that's been pulled down from the freezing straits of Labrador, is that genetically designed to put on fat? You're throwing him 400 grams of rapidly digested peanuts in his bowl you know and 60 percent of that is carbohydrates so he of course he's going to scavenge and look for more food um carbohydrate count the studies show the higher protein that you feed the dog the better is weight loss because he retains his lean body mass it's one of the reasons why dogs should be fed high protein diets it, it's just excellent for, for weight loss and once you're leaner it controls your your basal kind of inflammation and uh, it's better for arthritis uh, leaner dogs live longer dogs are long distance running animals very important Better for behavior, look, dry food, full of chemicals. If they say, if you can't pronounce it, don't feed it to a hyperactive child. Um, low in vitamin B complex and vitamin E, which are the brain kind of soothing um, um, nutrients. Uh, high carbohydrate, high sugar, kids after a birthday party. All that, for all those reasons, you wouldn't feed this unnatural product to, to a hyperactive kid. You'd be trying to stuff spinach into them and say, look, you know, slow down, eat some folate. Um, so behavior is unreal. And it's, I, I you know, I, I, of a doctor in behavior and then i was a trainer in guide dogs and when i saw the effect that raw dog food was doing to the dogs particularly when brisbane guide dogs jumped to raw dog food and they started telling me from a training point of view with stats how well their dogs were doing i knew straight away that we couldn't feed dry food anymore and that was the end of my, my guide dog career instantly when i started talking to brisbane guide dogs which was very sad because i thought i was in that for life so better behavior uh, some of the top behaviorists now are doing videos saying feed raw dog food there's links to them on my website Low, low salt. So, you know, dry food starts at 1% salt, which is the same salt content as, as salted peanuts. It starts at that. Then there's potassium chloride and all sorts of other chlorides in there. To, without the salt, the dog won't eat the food. Okay. But that salt content, a Labrador needs one gram of salt per day for normal function. If you give a Labrador 500 grams of 1% salt food, you're giving him five grams of salt per day. You're giving a Labrador five times the salt he needs per day. Five times the salt he needs per day. If humans eat nine grams of salt instead of six grams of salt, we die 20% younger. Okay, so salt is a devil. You, you can't eat too much of it. And dogs are plounded into them. They're so prone to kidney disease, it's a disgrace, as are cats, because cats don't drink water. So you're giving them these dry food, dry, key, uh, and full of salt and candles and stuff, and it's hard to, hard to digest. Raw dog food is easier, easier to digest. For all those reasons, fresh dog food is very, very good for kidneys. Studies show the more protein you feed the dogs with kidney issues, the better they do. So they did horrible studies 78 years ago on dogs where they nephrectomized them. And snip off some of their kidney function and uh, the dogs with a very little kidney function replicating almost total chronic kidney, uh, chronic kidney failure 90 percent of their function gone did the best on higher protein diets so the more protein you feed a dog with kidney issues the better off he is so just no reason to feed high protein diets